You can't be serious, Derek. The words tumbled out before I could even process the document he'd just slapped down in front of me. Divorce papers. We were just hours away from leaving for our dream honeymoon in Bali, and my fiancé of two years wanted to call the whole wedding off. I glared up at him, rage boiling inside me. Explain yourself. Now. Derek swallowed, avoiding my searing gaze. It's my parents. They insist on coming with us on the trip or else— that or else they'll make you divorce me? Is that what our relationship means to you? No, Marissa, that's not. Save it. I held up a hand. Blood roared in my ears. After all my efforts navigating his manipulative family, he still bent to their every command. I refuse to spend my honeymoon catering to your overbearing mother's ego. Please try to understand, Derek pleaded. It's just how my family is. Traditional. They feel like they should be included in all major events. I crossed my arms. And you didn't think to mention this sooner? We sent out the invitations months ago. Everything is booked. I know, I know. He slumped down in the nearest chair. I thought if I told you earlier you'd call the wedding off. Mom insisted I wait until the last second. Cold fury washed over me. So this ambush was strategic. Evelyn deliberately chose our weakest moment to force her demands. Now the coward expected sympathy? I met his watery gaze, anger broiling inside me. How could I have been so stupid to not see through this ruse? He sipped vodka, liquid courage to gaslight me. Behind his pathetic facade hid a spineless mama's boy, drunk on control. My voice dropped to a venomous whisper. Get out. I'm calling this thing off myself. Panic flashed across Derek's face. Marissa, please, we can work through this. He reached for my hand. I recoiled sharply. Don't touch me. It's clear where your priorities lie, and frankly, I refuse to play second fiddle to your lunatic family. He flinched like I'd slapped him across the face. A year ago that vulnerability would have softened me, but now the gesture only fanned my fury. How many times had his toxic relatives belittled, undermined, and insulted me? I was done being silenced and pushed around. I strode forward until we stood nose to nose. If you had an ounce of integrity, you'd stand up to them instead of hiding behind Mommy's skirt like an infant. My finger jabbed into his chest, punctuating each remark as his eyes bugged with fear. But unfortunately you were raised to be helpless, weak, codependent. With impeccable timing, his phone rang. Evelyn's smug face flashed on the screen. I spun away before I slapped her image off the table. This ended now. I would not be blindsided again. As I packed my bags, resolve fortified my shaking limbs. If it was war Evelyn wanted, then war she would have. The morning light filtering into my studio provided little warmth as I scrutinized the guest list for our would-be wedding reception. One by one, I mentally cataloged each name based on their level of enmeshment with Evelyn's toxic web of social connections. I reflected bitterly how I once viewed this list as the bonding of my chosen family with Derek's. How naive I'd been. A knock interrupted my brooding. My assistant Josie entered, her arms full of fabric samples for an upcoming client consultation. One look at my expression and her cheerful smile faded. What's wrong? She dropped the swatches on my desk with a soft wump. Did that witch make trouble again? I let out a harsh laugh. That's putting it mildly. Over the next half hour I recounted the ambush and ensuing fallout. Josie's shock shifted to outrage the more details I shared. That absolute harpy, Josie exploded, crashing her fist on my desk. Model houses and fabric samples jumped. She planned this sabotage from the start, waited until you couldn't back out without losing thousands. I dropped my head in my hands with a groan. I walked straight into their trap. I should have trusted my instincts when his family resisted every wedding plan. Josie clasped my shoulder, her expression solemn. This wasn't your fault. Derek misled you, probably under orders from that gorgon he calls mother. Anger reignited in my gut. Josie was right. Evelyn orchestrated this pretense of support while plotting my removal once I fully committed. I thought of her smug expression when I asked for input on centerpieces, cake designs, vows. My head jerked upward. The speech! Josie frowned. What speech? I gripped her wrist, mind racing. My bridesmaid's speech, where I planned to publicly thank Evelyn for welcoming me into their family. I groaned, envisioning her barely concealed delight. She knew I'd be humiliated when Derek left me at the altar. Josie's eyes narrowed to slits. That heartless witch! I strode toward my mock-ups and fabric samples. A plan was formulating. 
Evelyn's machinations had provided the perfect ammunition. Now I would deploy it against her. I turned to Josie with new conviction. Help me tear this place apart. We need to examine every wedding-related item with Evelyn's fingerprints. There must be more evidence of her plotting. Josie met my gaze, mirroring my look of dawning comprehension. Together we would expose Evelyn's deceit and render her the social pariah she deserved to be. Derek may have abandoned our partnership, but I had Josie's fierce loyalty. And that meant everything to me now. Let's give that old crone a taste of her own medicine, Josie said through gritted teeth. I squeezed her hand, gratitude and anticipation coursing through me. Game on, Evelyn. Your reckoning is coming. The following weeks passed in a blur of late nights poured over scandalous wedding mementos. Each custom invitation mocked me, Evelyn's fingerprints all over the intricate floral details she insisted complement the lace and chiffon monstrosity of a dress she selected. Like a spider, the cunning woman spun her web slowly, ensnaring me strand by silken strand. Josie became my anchor during this turbulent period. Together we dissected the mountain of wedding debris occupying my studio space, seeking any clue that could aid my vengeance. Bingo! Josie yelled late one Tuesday night. I jerked awake where I had nodded off at my work table, nearly upending my stone-cold coffee. Josie stood near the mock altar holding a framed photo from Derek's cousin's wedding two years prior. Sorry, didn't mean to startle you, she said, but look what I found in the pile of Derek's stuff. I squinted at the image of Derek dancing with a blonde woman, their bodies pressed together suggestively. My gut twisted with anger and vindication. So Derek's wandering eye wasn't a recent development, after all. Josie shook her head with disgust. I remember Evelyn boasting this was the event where Derek introduced her to you. Guess she conveniently forgot the part where her darling boy toy got handsy with another woman behind his girlfriend's back. My fists clenched with the urge to hurl something fragile. Instead, I took a deep breath. Have that photo printed and discreetly show a few key people. Let the gossip mill do some work for us. Josie's grin turned wolfish. With pleasure. I know just who to share this with, too. That will get tongues wagging. She tucked the frame under her arm and sauntered out. As the door swung shut, my phone buzzed with an incoming text. The name sapped the momentary satisfaction right out of me. Derek. Speak of the devil. I stared down at the screen, debating between ignoring it and indulging my curiosity. Curiosity won out. Derek. Hey, babe. Mom's still pretty upset about us postponing the wedding. Wants to meet up to clear the air. I scowled. The gall of that woman playing innocent while her spineless son begged me to reconcile with her. Evelyn orchestrated this entire debacle. If anyone owed apologies, it was her. Still, the text presented an opportunity. Perhaps I could covertly gather intel for my brewing plot. And honestly, I craved watching Evelyn squirm when she realized her machinations failed. After some consideration, I typed a response. Me. Fine. Meet me tomorrow at our old cafe. Just you and me. Leave your mother out of this. Derek began typing immediately, but I silenced my phone and headed home before he could worm his way back into my thoughts further. I needed rest for the performance of a lifetime tomorrow. Evelyn would rue the day she chose me as her adversary. With Josie's help securing damning evidence, I would avenge myself yet. I arrived at the cafe early, surveying the space like a cougar seeking vulnerable prey. Fortunately, the quaint shop was nearly empty save a few patrons nibbling scones with textbooks or laptops. I selected a small table in the back corner, ideal for monitoring the entrance while remaining inconspicuous. Right on time, the bell above the door chimed. I glimpsed Derek's sandy hair first as he scanned the room. His shoulders sagged with relief spotting me tucked away. Odd, I expected to see his mother latched onto him despite my explicit request she not attend. Derek approached my table cautiously as if nearing a hissing viper instead of his ex fiancee He cleared his throat. Hey, Marissa, thanks for agreeing to meet me. I gestured curtly to the seat across from me. Best to get straight to business since he decided to follow my instructions for once. Might as well use the opportunity for intelligence gathering. As Derek settled into his chair, I crossed my arms against my chest as a makeshift shield. His eyes held that familiar puppy dog look I once found so charming. Now it only amplified my disgust. How could I have loved such a feeble coward? Well, 
I prompted when the silence stretched uncomfortably. You insisted on this little chat, so speak. He winced at my biting tone. Right, I know tensions are high lately with my family. I cut him off with a sharp laugh. Are you seriously trying to blame your mother for ambushing me with divorce papers days before our wedding? I'm aware of her manipulations, but you stood there holding the dagger, Derek. I didn't want to, he held up placating hands to halt my tirade. Mom gave me no choice, said I had to show my loyalty or she'd cut me off. My lip curled with disgust. So it all came down to money then? I leaned forward. Time to poke the viper's nest. Well, you chose, and in doing so revealed exactly where we stood all along. That backstabbing display proved our relationship was a sham. Derek visibly paled. Come on, Marissa, don't say that. I still care deeply for you. His voice dropped. I was just protecting our future. I let out an acidic laugh that burned my throat. Our future? Don't make me laugh. I gripped his chin, relishing his wince. The only future you were protecting was your own, spineless as ever. I shoved his face away and grabbed my bag, resolved to purge this poison from my life forever. His gasps and stammers faded behind me as I strode proudly into my hard-won freedom. I strode out of the cafe with adrenaline pumping through my veins. The confrontation went even better than I imagined. Derek crumbled under the slightest pressure, revealing his spinelessness and Evelyn's vice grip on him. My suspicions were confirmed. Their family orchestrated this sabotage for financial gain, caring nothing for my dreams they eagerly crushed. Well, no more. I refused to waste another minute dwelling on their toxic web of lies. As I rounded the street corner, focused on hailing a taxi, my phone rang loudly. I didn't need to glance at the name flashing across the screen to guess who interrupted my dramatic exit. Likely the sniveling coward wanted the last word to salve his wounded pride. What do you want, Derek? I answered briskly, my tone sharp enough to sever bone. An acidic chuckle answered me instead. Come now, dear, is that any way to speak to your future mother-in-law? I froze in my tracks, knuckles whitening around my phone. Evelyn, I hissed between clenched teeth. To what do I owe the displeasure? Her answering laugh oozed false sympathy. Oh, I just had the most distressing chat with my son. He's absolutely inconsolable after your callous treatment earlier. Red flashed across my vision. I trembled with rage barely contained. Callous? I'm not the one who ambushed my fiancé with divorce papers and ridiculous ultimatums days before our wedding. Each word shot out like bullets from a machine gun. If anyone has been callous, deceitful, and manipulative here, it's you. A weighty pause followed my accusations, heavy with unspoken threats. When Evelyn spoke again, her prim voice dripped venom. Clearly this wedding debacle has overwhelmed that dramatic little mind of yours. Let's avoid further unpleasantness for all parties, shall we? The implication stood starkly against her genteel words. Comply or live to regret it. This time I embraced my fury like armor. Here's an idea, I replied, danger lurking beneath my steady tone. Stay out of my life from this moment on. Keep your toxicity away from me and we'll have no issue. I relished the sharp intake of breath through the phone, waited eagerly for her scathing retort. Instead, flat resignation greeted me after a taut minute. I see. Well, then. Her icy words sliced the tense silence between us. I wish you luck finding someone willing to tolerate that disrespectful attitude of yours. You'll certainly need it with your deficiencies. I stood trembling on that busy sidewalk long after she disconnected. The final veiled insult echoed in my ears, an ominous portent. But this time I refused to cower before Evelyn's threats. I would have the last word. Squaring my shoulders, I continued onward with purpose, fueling each stride. My taxi waited around the corner, engine rumbling in anticipation. I slid inside, resolved stealing my nerves. Where to, miss? One glance at Derek's desperate stream of texts solidified my intent. The airport, I announced. I'm taking back my life. The tropical heat enveloped me like a heavy wool blanket as I exited the airport. Despite the late hour, thick moisture clung to my skin, an apt metaphor for the drama I hoped to leave behind. I breathed deeply, orienting myself in this foreign environment. The scent of salt and palm trees mingled with exhaust fumes as luggage-toting tourists filed past me to awaiting cars. So different from the carefully cultivated towers of steel and glass I designed, yet intriguing in its chaotic harmony all the same.
As I headed toward the taxi queue, my burner phone vibrated, startling me from my contemplative reprieve. I grimaced expecting another pleading missive from Derek, likely begging me to reconcile after his latest sob session with Mommy Dearest. The coward remained so securely apron-stringed I wagered Evelyn still taste-tested his meals daily. Instead, an unlisted number flashed across the cracked screen. Against my better judgment, I answered. Marissa Winters, I stated briskly. After the confrontation with Evelyn, taking risks felt exhilarating instead of terrifying. A throat cleared on the other end. Marissa, it's Richard, Richard Thomas. We met at Derek's firm Christmas party a while back. I racked my brain trying to conjure a face. Flashes of ugly Christmas sweaters and watered-down cocktails surfaced. Derek introduced me to so many of his colleagues that night, few made an impression. Except... Richard, of course, I exclaimed, snapping my fingers. You were the only charming person in the lot. How are you? He chuckled. I'm well. Listen, I apologize if contacting you seems forward, but I saw your RSVP cancellation and wanted to reach out. I bristled, preparing a frosty retort about gossip chains, but Richard continued sincerely, giving me pause. Truly sorry if I'm overstepping, but from our conversation at the party, you seemed quite lovely and too mature for Derek's circle. He hesitated before adding gently, I guess my instincts were right, considering the broken engagement. My defensiveness wavered at his somber tone. Perhaps word spread about Derek's family sabotaging our wedding far and wide if sympathetic colleagues reached out. Their deceit impacting my reputation fueled my next bold move. I smiled slyly. Richard, no need to apologize for calling. In fact, I'd love to get coffee sometime and... Chat. I put slight emphasis on the final word, implying more. He inhaled sharply, clearly not expecting my response, but he recovered smoothly. Chat, huh? I'd be delighted. Maybe, maybe over dinner instead when you're next in town? It's a date. After finalizing plans to meet up in a few weeks, I hung up feeling re-energized. An attractive, successful man sought my company despite the gossip. Already my revenge stirred interest. Whistling to myself, I climbed into the waiting taxi, directing the driver to my Oceanside Resort. As we lurched into chaotic traffic under swaying palms, I reflected on the remaining loose ends awaiting my return home. But for now, Tropical Adventure called. And with Richard's intriguing overture, both business and pleasure soon awaited me. Stunning Derek's circles with my quick rebound would deliver the ultimate vengeance. I intended to savor every minute of their downfall, starting now. The weeks apart served me well, bringing much-needed distance and clarity. I channeled my energy into the budding relationship with Richard, now my official boyfriend. He accompanied me to various industry events, stealing Derek's spotlight effortlessly with his charisma and genuinely supportive nature. My reputation not only remained untarnished from the broken engagement, but improved tenfold on Richard's arm. Still, the thirst for vengeance simmered beneath the surface as Evelyn and Derek kept painfully low profiles in avoidance. Their absence from the social scene fueled rumors faster than any coordinated scheme. Josie kept me informed of the choicest gossip tidbits concerning their family's dirty laundry airing. The vultures are circling. Josie commented one night as we reviewed her intelligence over dinner. With you AWOL and their circle fractured, people feel emboldened to question Evelyn's authority. I smirked at that, taking a deliberately slow sip of wine, savoring the news. Perfect. Those frauds deserve every ounce of scrutiny coming their way. What about Derek? Oh, he's positively miserable according to office chatter, Josie replied with relish. Got passed over for some promotion thanks to your little coffee confrontation exposing his weak backbone. My laughter echoed around the table, unleashed and carefree at last. Let Derek drown in the career limbo his mommy dear sentenced him to, chained under her supervision. Served the coward right for casting me aside at her command. Several weeks later, karma came full circle at a benefit gala. I glided into the opulent ballroom on Richard's arm effortlessly commanding attention in a shimmering A-line gown, exposing just enough skin to make heads turn discreetly. Outwardly cool and collected, despite the RSVP listing, Derek and his parents in attendance, I prepared to deliver a killing blow to their social standing. As we mingled casually amidst tinkling glasses and boisterous laughter, I spotted my targets whispering together in a distant corner. From their huddled postures and darting eyes, 
they clearly sensed predatory danger, but found themselves unable to escape my trap. I left Richard chatting with a colleague and cut deliberately across the room, two flutes of champagne in hand, as I closed in for the attack. My glittering smile remained locked in place as I stepped neatly into their space, just as their urgent whispers died. "'Evelyn, darling!' I exclaimed brightly, leaning in to brush her stiff cheek with mine as I extended a champagne glass. "'How wonderful to see you!' Evelyn's answering smile sharpened into a grimace under her expertly blended makeup. Derek pointedly avoided my gaze beside her, wilting under the heat of my satisfying revenge. Marissa, Evelyn replied, thin as glass and just as delicate. What? A surprise. Her eyes tracked Richard subtly as he observed our interaction nearby, assessing the new threat. I maintained my dazzling grin, refusing to cede ground. The board was so generous to include me for Table Nine's auction item tonight, though I'm certain my date outbid your usual ask. I flashed my eyes coyly toward Richard, watching realization sink Evelyn's painted features. Yes, well, she faltered uncharacteristically. I suppose we misjudged your resilience after that unpleasant incident. Derek cringed at the mention but remained silent. Still spineless as ever then. I almost pitied his misery. Almost. Instead I channeled that simmering fury into a final, brutal strike. I stepped nearer and dropped my voice. Clearly you underestimated me, Evelyn, dear, attempted to bury me socially and career-wise, but only dug your own grave. I gestured subtly around us where partygoers observed our tense exchange. Rumors abound regarding certain indiscretions and manipulations, all thanks to your bungled schemes. Her eyes narrowed, hard and reflective as glass, but I continued before she uttered the threat teetering behind her lips. However, seeing as tonight Harold's new beginnings allow me to extend professional courtesy— I allowed Frost to permeate my sugary tone, stay out of my way permanently, and perhaps I refrain from exposing every excruciating detail of your family's cruelty. Are we clear? Evelyn's expression soured, no doubt swallowing venom. Through rigid lips she forced out, Crystal. I crumpled my champagne flute delicately in one hand, savoring her demise. Excellent. Do give Richard and me some space. We have a charity auction to win. Ta-ta! I sauntered away after one lingering look at Derek's crestfallen face, riding the ultimate high of sweet revenge. Their reputations smoldered in ruins thanks to my flawless execution. Now at long last, balanced justice and freedom were mine. 